Back, you're watching Trading Hour. Let's focus on some stories that we are tracking here at CNBC TV 18. The deal to sell off DHFL or at least a part of DHFL has now seen a new entrant come into the fray and this is hoping, this is raising hopes rather of a solution uh, to the entity's asset liability mismatch problems. Nisha is here with the details. What's the new name, Nisha? Who's the new, new entrant now? Thanks for that, Surbi. Yes, uh, it's some good news coming in for the investors of DHFL because there is a new suitor in the fray for buying out a majority stake in DHFL or at least the talks have begun. Sources with direct knowledge have shared with CNBC TV 18 that Aon Capital, which remember is a special situations fund, a joint venture between ICICI Ventures as well as Apollo Global is uh, the one which has entered the fray uh, to discuss the DHFL deal talk. In fact, sources with uh, direct knowledge also suggests that they could be signing a term sheet for the DHFL transaction very soon and therefore uh, the due diligence process will start. Of course, the valuations, the amount that they are going to infuse is something that will be decided upon the due diligence because there have been many allegations also on uh, the company and uh, on the funding as well. But as far as the asset uh, liability mismatch of the company's wholesale book is concerned, which is uh, more than 50% uh, in, in that DHFL's books, uh, the company has tried uh, to figure out various uh, uh, structures with various participants like Piramal Enterprises, Lone Star, as well as Oak Tree as well to either separate the retail as well as wholesale to our remedy for the ALM or else also get in a financial investor or a strategic investor right on top to buy a majority stake in the company. So all those structures are being deliberated upon. But Aon Capital, as I know, has been keen on financial services space for a long time and has entered fray and is talking to DHFL at this point. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sir Nisha, very much for that update. Let's move to yet another uh, corporate story. Apollo Hospitals has been buzzing around in trade. Uh, the margins for the company improved in the fourth quarter. The management is expecting growth in the existing hospitals to actually go up as well. In fact, Ekta has been uh, tracking those numbers and the management commentary post. Ekta, so uh, stock's very excited. What are the key highlights that could be triggering this move? Well, the numbers, uh, the this market reacted to the numbers per se, which came out on Thursday and then, you know, reacted to it on Friday. But what it's reacting to is obviously the conference call and the management takeaways. So, for example, the management has guided for a 10% growth in their existing hospitals with a margin improvement. And they they expect around, uh, they expect their new hospitals to grow around 30% with a further improvement in margins as well there. So, that's positive. Separately, the management indicated that it expects a liquidity event to take place in September, October, where it will reduce its pledge by 40%. So, they expect no pledge by the end of FY20. They expect the net debt to decline from around 3,200 crores in FY19 to around 2,500 crores in FY20. And the net debt reduction will be led by transactions on the pharmacy front end. They're planning to really build up their own label and, uh, you know, the pharmacy front end to really carry the work forward. Jefferies has a hold. They've raised the target price to 1250 results ahead of expectations, but they expect competitive pressures to remain. CLSA buy target price increase to 1600 Key positive was the second consecutive quarter of double-digit growth for existing hospitals. This is along with strong margin improvement. Okay, all right, so that's the Polo Hospitals right now uh, in green territory, almost 9% higher on that stock. With that, let's shift focus back to the market, which itself is actually in a very good spirits today. Sanjay Sinha, founder of Citrus Advisors, joins in to talk about some of the fundamental cues. Sanjay, good morning. Good to be speaking with you on Trading Hour. Uh, so, yes, right now, I mean, it's not quite adding up because all the fundamental cues that we're getting, all the data, GDP numbers, auto sales numbers, all of that is very dismal. The market, however, is moving on to a different hope. Your thoughts and whether you see this pattern, this kind of trade continue. So there are two parts to my reply. One is that, you know, the market itself is not a very homogeneous market. Uh, over the last one year, very strikingly, we have seen a dissimilar performance of the large cap versus the mid cap. The recent rally that we have seen has still been largely concentrated in the large cap. The mid caps have still a long way to go to catch up with where they were, say, in the early part of January 2018. Having said that, I see that, you know, there are a couple of events before us. You know, we have the RBI policy just this week. Then we have the expectations building up to the budget uh, in the first week of July. 
I think this will keep the interest in the market alive. Number one. Number two, there has been a lot of money that has been sitting on the side uh, in the apprehension about the election result. I expect that you know that money is now going to rush in into the market and going by the classical way in which the uh, domestic money has been allocated, I expect that you know larger part of the allocation will go to the mid caps rather than to the large caps. So uh, while the you know the Nifty and the Sensex about 12,000 and 40,000 points respectively will keep the uh, sentiment alive, I think much of the action will actually happen in the mid cap space. Hmm. Within the mid cap, Sanjay, what would you be targeting in terms of sectors? So I think you know one uh, shift which I think is happening in the market. A lot of interest seems to be shifting to the cyclical uh, sectors, more particularly the banking and the capital goods. Uh, there has been some apathy that has been building up over the last couple of uh, months uh, with the consumption oriented space and more particularly the uh, consumer discretionary. I think that uh, apathy has also extended to auto and auto ancillary. I would say that you know if you want to play with the momentum of the market, you might go along with these uh, sectors which are the sectors of uh, fa uh, flavor and flavor today. But I think if you play a little contrarian, I would say that you know the India story cannot progress without consumption as the underlying theme. And therefore, if we are going to be seeing some weakness in the consumption oriented space, as a contrarian uh, player, it might make sense for you to accumulate them at these weaknesses when the price earning ratios are more favorable. But then, you know, having said that, your horizon will have to be a little longer. You will have to stagger your uh, investment over a period of time because, you know, do not know whether this is the bottom or the bottom is, you know, some, time, some distance away. So I would say you should play 60% uh, in favor of the cyclicals and maybe 30 to 40% in favor of the uh, consumer discretionary. Okay. Um, the big debate right now, Sanjay, also seems to be uh, the auto space. I mean, look at what's happening, the market reaction today. Uh, is the worst of the price damage over? All these numbers, the weakness that we're seeing, even in May for that matter, is it all factored in? Would you look at buying autos or auto ancillaries? Okay, so uh, there, uh, so be two things. One is that uh, you know, uh, we still haven't seen the onset of monsoon. And you know, monsoon is not just one variable, it is actually split into three. Uh, the, uh, the time, the spatial uh, and the volume, all the three factors connected with monsoon have to be playing out right for the rural consumption to come back into play. If that is, uh, you know, the, if the monsoon is favorable on all the, these three factors, time, space and volume, then I would expect that, you know, some of these uh, discretionary uh, sectors, uh, particularly say uh, two wheelers, uh, tractors, they will surely be beneficiary. The, the second factor I think and which is equally important is that, you know, this NBFC crisis I think has taken a very big toll on auto and you know we are not uh, seeing the one to one relationship uh, immediately but you know if you listen talk to all the auto companies they all articulate that the lack of uh, funding has also been one of the uh, factors so i guess these two factors need to be addressed first one of them is beyond our control which is nature's power but i think the nbfc crisis is surely within uh, policy uh, initiative so one will have to see how do these two things uh, play out before one takes a call on the auto I think you know but the other call which we are talk, uh, people have been talking about about a structural shift from owning uh, vehicles versus you know uh, going in for a ride sharing uh, uh, use. I think you know that is a little too premature to start impacting auto sales in a country like India where the penetration is so low. What about financials? What kind of choices are you making within the financial space? Are you probably going for the PSU banks or are you sticking to the safe haven um, corporate? private banks so this quarter actually has been a bit of a uh, i will say a shocker as far as the psu banking space is concerned because you know other than state bank of india uh, the uh, you know the other marquee names in the psu banking space except for probably one have disappointed and if you see the entire quarterly results you will see most of the psu banks in the loss making end of the uh, chart 
so i would say that the uh, the better strategy to play out at least for the next couple of quarters would be to go with the corporate facing banks and if these corporate facing banks are there in the private sector they would be the better choice than to rush into the psu banking space at this point of time i think we need to give them a couple of quarters more before we can take a uh, call on psu banks in general Okay. All right, Sanjay. Good talking to you as always. Thank you for taking out the time and joining in. We do need to take a break right now.